Hi there! Alright! Aside from baroreceptor reflex, another important physiological mechanism in regulating blood pressure is the hormone. One important hormone that plays a role in blood pressure regulation is the antidiuretic hormone or ADH. ADH is also called arginine vasopressin. It's a hormone made by the hypothalamus in the brain and stored in the posterior pituitary gland. It tells your kidneys how much water to conserve. Diuresis meaning increases urine production. Antidiuresis meaning it decreases urine production, essentially decreases water excretion. ADH constantly regulates and balances the amount of water in your blood and in large concentration, it has a vasoconstrictive effect. Therefore, it can directly affect blood pressure. Vasopressin name of ADH derived from its vasoconstrictive effect. That is why vasopressin. Now, the question is, how does this hormone regulate blood pressure? To understand this, Let's start with the basic concept of water balance regulation and homeostasis. Our body needs just the right amount of water. If we have too much water in the body, we'll be fluid overloaded or hyperbulimia. The extra fluid in the body can raise your blood pressure and force your heart to work hard. It can also make it hard for you to breathe. If we have less water in the body, on the other hand, we'll become dehydrated and if dehydration is severe, it will lead to decreased blood volume or hypovolemia. In hypovolemia, blood pressure is low, which consequently will lead to shock, so the body requires balanced water. The term that plays a role here is osmolarity or osmotic concentration. What the body needs is just right level of osmotic concentration or osmolarity. Osmolarity is a measure of solute concentration defined as the number of osmoles of solute per liter of solution. Just the right level of osmolarity is what we need. Water can move freely between different compartments in the body but its direction is determined by which compartment has more solutes or high osmolarity. Water moves from a more diluted solution to a more concentrated solution or from low osmolarity to high osmolarity. This passive transport is called osmosis. Movement of water through a semi-permeable membrane from a low concentration solution into a solution of higher solute concentration that tends to equalize the concentration of solute on the both sides of the membrane. Okay, so if this is the cell for example, here is the intracellular and here is the extracellular. If there is too much water in the body extracellularly, meaning outside the cell, that would dilute the solutes here and that would decrease its osmolarity. As a result, the intracellular would become more concentrated than the extracellular compartment, and that would cause the water to move passively inside the cell. The cell would swell then and burst. And in that case scenario, that is bad. Okay, now what would happen if there is less water outside the cell? If there is less water outside the cell, meaning there are more solutes. And by the way, majority of the solutes outside the cell is sodium. Alright? Okay. The presence of more solutes would increase the osmotic concentration of extracellular compartment. That would cause to move the water out from the cell and then cell will shrink and become dehydrated. As I mentioned, the majority of sodium is present extracellularly. Therefore, sodium is the principal determinant of plasma osmolarity. The normal blood sodium level is between 135 to 145 millimole per liter. 
that's why we have this rule where sodium goes water goes okay high osmolarity and volume depletion are the two strong factors that affect ADH or vasopressin secretion there are three primary organs involved in the physiology of ADH these are the hypothalamus posterior pituitary and the kidneys in a hyperosmolar state or high osmolarity, you have high sodium and low plasma volume, and you have low blood pressure. In that case, the neurons express osmoreceptors located in the hypothalamus that are exquisitely responsive to blood osmolarity sense it. A slight elevation in uh, osmolarity result in the secretion of ADH. The hypothalamus then stimulates the posterior pituitary where the ADH is stored to be released into the circulation. ADH then acts primarily in the kidneys to increase water reabsorption, thus returning the osmolarity to baseline, increasing plasma volume, and returning blood pressure to its normal level. As we know, the kidneys are responsible for water excretions and conservation. Also, it filters out waste and toxins and returns needed molecules to the blood. In the kidney, the responsible for that job are the nephrons, the functional unit of the kidneys. There are millions of nephrons in the kidneys. In the nephron, normally, secretion and reabsorption occurs in the different segments of the nephron. Secretion is the movement of water and solutes from circulation to renal tubules. Reabsorption is the movement of water and solutes from tubules to the circulation. Reabsorption takes place mainly in the proximal convoluted tubule of the nephron. Nearly all of the water glucose, potassium, and amino acid lost during glomerular filtration re-enter the blood from the renal tubules. Vasopressin acts on the cell of the collecting duct. This is the last tubes of the nephron or the last tubules of the nephron, the collecting duct. All right, so this cell contains receptors for vasopressin that are linked to vesicles that contain special water channels. These are the aquapurins. When the cells are stimulated by vasopressin, the aquapurins fused with the region of the cell membrane that is exposed to urine, allowing water to enter the cells. The water is then returned to the circulation. This causes the volume of urine to decrease and the urinary content of sodium, chloride, and other substances to increase. When this occurs, the urine is said to be concentrated. All right, how about in the low osmolar state? During low osmolar state, meaning you have more water in the body, or you are hypervolemic and have high blood pressure. The osmoreceptor in the hypothalamus senses it and inhibits the release of the ADH or vasopressin. The absence of ADH from the circulation and in the kidney would decrease the water channel or the aquaporins and water absorption decreases and more water would be excreted in the urine. The urine then will become more diluted. Increased water excretion will lead to a decrease in plasma volume and decreased blood pressure. Vasopressin is also released in response to a decrease in blood volume. It's related to the baroreceptor reflex, which I have already discussed in the previous video. When baroreceptors detect high arterial blood pressure because of the stretch in the aortic arc and carotid sinus, these nerves carry impulses to the vasopressin-producing nerve cells that inhibit the secretion of vasopressin, resulting in increased water excretion, leading to decreased plasma volume, and consequently decreased blood pressure. 
Conversely, if blood volume decreases, the stretch of the carotid sinus and the aortic arc decreases. Vasopressin release increases and water excretion decreases thereby helping to restore blood volume and blood pressure to normal. Other stimuli can also cause a release of vasopressin. This include pain, stress, and several drugs including opiate drugs. Antidiuretic hormone also has a second action on vascular smooth muscle. In high level of ADH, it causes vasoconstrictions. Antidiuretic hormone binds to V receptors on vascular smooth muscle and causes contraction of vascular smooth muscle, leading to increases in total peripheral resistance and thus increases blood pressure. This mechanism is synergistic with water reabsorption in that both mechanisms elevate blood pressure. And it is crucial in periods where sufficient arterial blood volume is low to maintain tissue perfusion.